Thank you everyone for joining this workshop today with D3 Security and Recorded Future. We're gonna talk about how you can get 20 on 20 visibility on two-factor authentication, multi-factor authentication, and basically get rid of those blind spots. A little bit about um, today's workshop before um, and it over to our speakers. Without any further ado, let's begin with a little housekeeping. So the webinar is going to be recorded and is going to be available on demand. So in case um, you are not able to um, share the webinar or some of your colleagues are not able to attend today, don't worry about it. We will share a link to the recording of, after the webinar so you will be able to access it. We'll have a live Q&A at the end. I would encourage all of you um, to stay for that. Um, we, we, we have some very good uh, panelists and speakers, and uh, I think we all stand to gain a lot from their experience. I encourage you to ask questions. Sometimes, you know, you don't want to wait till the end. That's completely all right. Just type them into the chat, and we'll make sure all your questions are addressed. Uh, the best question from the audience receives a $50 gift voucher. That's something we do every time. And uh, we can also have, we can also give out more gift vouchers if there are um, you know, more questions which are really good. So um, I'm excited to welcome and talk about our first speaker, Luis Rodriguez. Luis is um, with Recorded Future. He's got over 22 years of experience in the industry and he's held various different positions as system administrator, consultant, and a solutions architect as well. He's very passionate about helping enterprise customers become more cyber resilient. He's also very passionate about helping partners, and uh, he's been a great partner for the, us at D3. Uh, Luis believes that the silo mentality is a big impediment, and you know I've, I've heard this said um, at various different stages that Cybersecurity is indeed a village. So we need people, products, companies, processes to collaborate, talk to each other. And Lewis's mission has been to educate and collaborate with the wider community. So he's a true proponent of um, that vision to create a more secure IT ecosystem. Thanks, Thank Lewis, you, for joining us. Uh, we're delighted to have you. And um, Tom, let me share a little bit about you with our audience here. So Tom is a senior cybersecurity sales engineer here at D3. He's from Ireland and uh, he actually has a degree in digital forensics and cybersecurity. Previously, Tom has also worked as a security engineer in a SOC. So he's very hands-on with real world problems and challenges of cyber incident response, which um, you know, he's been in those shoes, so he can now um, work very effectively with clients across the world to help tailor uh, D3 SOAR platform and meet their needs. Thank you, Tom, for taking the time out to join this webinar. Uh, Luis, I would like to hand it over to you at this stage to um, talk to us a little bit, and uh, then maybe we can hand over to Tom later on. Over to you. Yeah. Absolutely. Thank you for having me. Really appreciate it. So let me tell you a little bit more about uh, Recorded Future for those of you in the audience that are not familiar with Recorded Future. We are the largest private intelligence company, um, and our mission is to help uh, build a digital twin of the world. If something's happening in the world, uh, there's a digital fingerprint uh, that, that we want to collect. So we're collecting... Um, information from about a million plus sources in real time, and it's growing to the tune of 100 new sources uh, on a weekly basis. Uh, we're doing a lot of analysis. Uh, we also provide Finnish uh, intelligence into the platform, and we make that accessible for our customers uh, to consume that data. So if you can go to the next slide, Amrdeep. We focus on in cybersecurity specifically, uh, providing a persistent and pervasive uh, view of cyber threats, collecting information about the adversaries, uh, their intent, the infrastructure that they build, 
and the organizations that they target. And we hope to show you some of that, um, some of that collection and, and the examples we're gonna be uh, sharing with you later today. So thank you. If you can go to the next slide. So what makes us different um, is, is the complete coverage we're providing, the real-time context, and the, the actionability of the information. We're trying to provide actionable, meaningful insights that enable true automation. That's why this partnership with D3 Security is very important, is because we provide the intelligence, they're driving the actions, and Tom is going to talk about that uh, here in a few minutes. So if you can go to the next slide, please, I'm Deep. Thank you. So what we are going to be talking to you about today are about some of the challenges that cybersecurity professionals um, are facing when it comes to uh, the identity use cases. Due to the expanding attack surface, uh, the increase in uh, the remote workforce, uh, we're seeing that 79% of organizations are experiencing an identity-related breach with, you know, within the past two years. Um, and about 80% of organizations increase focus on identity and security, especially because of the growth in remote work. So these are the challenges we're going to try to shed some light about how these type of attacks are happening. We have a nice little video we're going to uh, show you here too as well. So if you can go to the next slide. One of the main reasons why identity-related um, incidents are on the rise is because of the initial access brokers. These are companies or uh, threat actors, uh, as you can see in this example, that are basically collecting data uh, from some of the, the stealer logs, for example, for VPN, RDP access, Citrix credentials, and other types of technologies that are of high value um, to, uh, to other threat actors to move, to gain an initial access into uh, organizations, hence the name initial access brokers. Um, if you can go to the next slide. So the use cases that we're gonna help with uh, to remediate or prevent is account takeover prevention, uh, we also enable pers uh, personnel identity monitoring and also third-party identity monitoring. Those customers that might be logging in to your uh, assets and uh, the credentials that they're using. So in the next slide, uh, in the next um, here, go ahead, MRD, thank you. Here we're going to show you a video about how these uh, credentials are being used to bypass two-factor authentication. Um, in this example is a Google uh, authentication. You can see here how easy it is for the threat actors. They're trying to log in with compromised credentials. And then when they get asked for the two-factor authentication, they leverage a browser extension because some of the marketplaces are selling the credentials with cookies. And you can see the cookies being imported. And once the cookies are there, they basically hijack a session. Uh, for people that think that multi-factor authentication is the end all be all for protecting those identities, that just goes to show how easy it is for somebody that purchases compromised credentials uh, from the dark web, it, um, how easy it is for them to bypass two-factor authentication. So thank you, Amar Deep. Thank you, Luis. Thank you so much. Um, Tom, this is, I guess, the stage where I will hand it over to you to talk about why the free security and recorded future uh, would work better together in a real world scenario based on the example that we just discussed. Thanks, Amar Deep. Thanks, Luis. Really appreciate the time here. And thanks, everybody, for joining. Great advantage that Recorded Future can give to any security uh, center is, is huge in terms of that data that you can receive and the multitude of different uh, ways we can use it within the D3 is um, multifaceted as well as very you know, technical in, in terms of the depth of knowledge you can kind of gain from it. So particularly when it comes to the relationship that we have with Recorded Future, we not only use it for 
you know, threat intel enrichment for IOCs and all these different things. There's a lot of other steps we could do around the identity piece here in terms of linking into things like the um, attack surface monitoring that they could do within uh, Recorded Future. But particularly what we'd like to look at for this demonstration is what kind of use cases you could create around this particular workflow and what kind of response you'd like to do as a SOC. And we've got a couple of examples of what we would ant anticipate would be a generic you know, workflow for this type of scenario. We want to give you guys an insight into what a workflow would look like. And then for us, uh, we could talk a bit, a bit deeper about what different avenues we can go down. So if we go to the next slide, please. So here's our current loadout of integrations that we have within uh, D3 for recorded future. We also have the attack surface aspect of uh, things as well. But for the uh, gen general recorded future integration, the key uh, command we're going to focus on today is the lookup credentials command. This will bring back those exact details that Luis was discussing, you know, those exposed cookies, these exposed credentials that they'll find within the uh, domain that they're monitoring in order to bring back the information to be able to uh, you know, respond accordingly into this scenario. So for this particular demonstration, we'll be purely focusing on the lookup credentials command. So go to the next slide, please. So here's what we anticipate a workflow looking like with D3. Now, the beauty of using D3 with these, uh, these facets is the ability that we have to be in a tool agnostic platform. Uh, we are an independent company. It's something that we always hang our hat on here at D3, and we want to work well with all of our partners. So in this particular example here, we're going to be using Recorded Futures uh, lookup query to be able to gain those uh, you know, exposed credentials and those users. And what we'd like to do with that information is if you're in a SOC, the generic workflow you probably would run out of your KB articles is you get the information, you understand, you know, what machine that belongs to, who that actually belongs to. And then maybe you want to go ahead and quarantine the host using your different tools you have at your disposal. But what we want to do with D3 is make sure we're very proactive in this approach, make sure that the time it takes to be able to get to a safe remediation for this is a short but also very uh, articulate for the analysts to understand what's happening and everybody at every stage understands what's going on. Very, very fast, but also it comes with a lot of logic-based uh, designs within it. So in this particular scenario here, we download that information into D3. We either create some events based off of it and then look into uh, checking for those um, MFA cookies within the log, separating into two different categories between either the credentials that are exposed or the cookies that are exposed here, and then take the necessary action. So we can go to the next slide, please. And that's exactly what we're doing here. In this particular image here, this is what a workflow actually looks like within the D3 engine. Everything you're gonna look at right now is has no code involved with it. As you know, we always say, it's no code. It's all just drag and drop uh, different modules within the playbooks to be able to build them. So from left to right here, we're doing one very simple thing, which is just getting that information into D3. We use JSON as our unified data form within D3. So it makes it very easy for us to manipulate data within the playbooks. And here we're just separating the two data point, the two uh, types of users that we have. So we have the ones with exposed credentials and cookies, and then we'll move on to the next remediation step. From here, we want to be able to take the necessary actions that we would consider to be quite standard within any organization. Um, for all these use cases, your main objective would be to make sure that either the users and credentials who, are, who have been exposed are changed, or if there are any kind of potential for some cookies that have been exposed, like you just seen how easy it was to do it within the example, we want to make sure that we're locking down that user's access, we're completely shutting off any kind of uh, outsider threat that could happen within this scenario, either using your EDR solutions or your Active Directory solutions, whether it be Google, whether it be you know, Microsoft, whatever it may be, that's one of the key features of D3 being a vendor agnostic platform is we can use whatever you have available at this point to be able to do the necessary actions, whether or not you're an MSSP monitoring multiple different clients with different tool sets, or you're an enterprise level client, with maybe different departments who have different, different tool sets. But that's the one key feature you wanna show off here is that all of these action items that happen, they completely uh, no code involved with it, can happen very much instantaneously. And it's one of the main benefits of using D3 here. So I think we're going backwards here. And then at the end here, you can see once you're verified that the user's credentials have either been reset or that the uh, necessary steps have taken place, we can go ahead and close the potential incident out. We can unquarantine that particular endpoint using whatever EDR solution that they're currently using. But um, from our perspective, the data you can receive from a quarter of the future is extremely rich. It's something that we won't really see within any of the Intel uh, platform that we work with. The depth and the capabilities we can use with that is, is undeniably uh, 
uh, fantastic for us. And we're very, very excited to be doing this workshop with, with uh, Recorded Future. So uh, there's another slide, I think, to come. Is that correct? Or are we wrapping it up here? Yeah. And then once we obviously close out this particular incident, um, we want to make sure we're doing our necessary steps so we can move on to the next slide. So yeah, I really appreciate everybody's time here in this short workshop. It's just to give you know all of our potential partners and uh, uh, people in the audience a, a view into what it would look like to be able to use Recorded Future within D3, the capabilities that you'd be able to have in terms of the remediation around these items. And as Louise said, 79% of all organizations are suffering from these particular attacks. And to be able to do this necessary items of responding almost instantaneously with a large list of items. So if you have an almost 50 to 100 people exposed in these scenarios, you could uh, very much remediate the scenario all with our automation playbooks when less than 10 to 20 minutes, really, just depending on how quick they are to action themselves. So really appreciate everybody's time here today in this workshop. And uh, yeah, if there's any questions, we'd love to uh, take so, some questions from the audience. So Tom, we have, we have a lot of questions. I'm going to uh, read them out and um, ask you or Luis to answer them uh, based on whatever you guys prefer. The first question is, can you leverage your own custom IOCs as well as configure the confidence level? So, so Tom, do you want to answer that from the D3 side? Yeah, of course. Uh, we have a couple of very clever ways of using your own custom uh, IOCs within the E3. Uh, we have a very uh, fascinating function, which is around artifacts and creating customized artifacts based on field mappings from your raw data logs. So essentially, um, as you import, uh, as you ingest the information within the D3, you can flag a certain field as a specific artifact type. And then that artifact type is then stored within three D, in D3, even past retention in some aspects, because obviously the raw data can be removed, but the IOCs can be kept on. And we can use that for further enrichment later on, where we might have, say, for instance, in war, one raw event, we could have an email address and a host name or an IP address. But maybe in a later on, we could have another alert that might contain one of these particular IOCs. It might be able to find relationships across multiple different events using these items. So yes, that's, of course, we can use your own custom IOCs as well. And it can actually change the severity within the incidents as, it, as it's ongoing. Okay, thanks. Thanks for answering that, Tom. Um, Luis, I think the next question may be best answered by you. Um, it says, how can we determine the exposed cookies and identities as received from recorded future feeds belong to our employees in our organization? So how can we know that these exposed cookies and identities that we've received from Recorded Future actually belong to employees in our organization? Yeah, so we have different ways to do that. Um, the, the, major, the, the highest fidelity data is really coming from um, some of the deep and dark web sources. And those we are associating to the actual authorization uh, domain or the host name. So whenever we do a query in the platform, uh, let's say, you know, if you're working for acme.com, the person that asks a question, they are gonna get credentials that have been associated in the recorded future database with that primary domain. Uh, we can also do credential lookup based on email. So if you have a full email or a username uh, as well, and you provide that, that can also be configured in the API. So uh, the short answer is that we're doing that heavy lifting and that association in the database. Um, and there's ways to query that and filter that to make sure that you're only, that you're reducing the noise and only getting credentials that are um, associated to your organization. Okay, thank you, Luis. Um, the next question here is, how does sandboxing work with this integration? So I believe, you, yeah, go ahead, Luis. No, go ahead, Tom. So uh, essentially, the with the key features we could use with the uh, recorded future are all about you know enrichment or getting information such as identity functions and then obviously using attack services as well. The sandbox boxing for, uh, function within D3 would take, for instance, the hash file or the the file name, the file itself, and then detonate it within the sandbox and recorded future. Thank you, Tom. Um, the next question is. What ticketing systems does D3 integrate with? 
all, all ticketing systems. Um, so your main uh, heavy hitters, ServiceNow, Jira, um, uh, and any of the, the most common ones we would have uh, already out of the box within the platform, but uh, like fresh desk and so on. But if there's any kind of unknown or any custom in-house uh, ticketing systems, our um, unsupported integration uh, functions are very, very simple to these to set up. And uh, what we can do as D3 is improve and enhance those requests by working with your teams if they are custom ones. But if they're commercially available products, we'd be more than happy to do those, uh, those uh, enhancements for free. Okay. Um... I, I want to thank our audience for the questions. You know, we uh, have a lot have of great questions more, coming out. Um, no, I have a few more here um, that came in earlier. So what other functions and use cases does the D3 and recorded future integration support? Oh, yeah, that's great. Um, so Attack Surface is a new one that we've been working on recently. Uh, a lot of very rich uh, domain uh information we can get from there in regards to like like we're doing here monitoring a domain and looking for all the weaknesses and exposed uh urls um then we also just generically when we do any of our malware investigations and we're looking for reputational sources around certain iocs uh it's definitely one of our most common integrations that we see within our, our client base and something that we're you know use pretty much on the regular for any demonstrations and so on. So if you have seen this in the past during demonstrations, you will see us mentioned for quarter future. But uh, um, I think, Luis, if there's any other functions <laughs> that are in the uh, the platform, I think uh, there's a wide open amount of APIs we can pull from there. But uh, are there any other functions you could think of? No, you cover most of them. I, what I would say is basically reiterate the, uh, the point you just made. Uh, because recorded future is a SaaS application uh, built on, on REST-based APIs. Uh, very easy for us if there if there is not functionality that uh, D3 security is taking advantage right now. If a customer has a specific use case, it's very easy for us to uh, to work with D3, uh, show them the the endpoints and the documentation, and build that out. So we've done that in the past for other customers. So there is no reason why we couldn't take advantage of the full. Um, to the full extent of the APIs from Recorded Future. So um, there is um, one question, which the next question that says that, is there a marketplace to review for integrations that are supported and how are new integrations prioritized? Um, and I can answer this from a D3 uh, standpoint that, you know, we essentially support all integrations with all security products. So we, because we're a sole product, we allow our customers to have their choice of security stack and um, new integrations are prioritized based on customer demands and also from the inputs of uh, a research team that we have dedicated to building integrations day in and day out. Um, and the second part of this question, uh, Tom, is, is really something that you can probably answer better. Mm -hmm. um, does it support bi-directional integration? So does the, I'm guessing this is about the recorded future and D3 integration. Is it bi-directional um, with various platforms, including recorded future? So even beyond recorded future? Yeah, there's definitely a lot of bi-directional integrations uh, across all the different tools. So it's definitely something we, we were, were improving, uh, especially around our same integrations and our other uh, threat and tell enrichment uh, Integration, but it's definitely something we can do, but I'd like we're doing a lot more to improve upon. Okay. Um we have a question. I don't know who the attendee is. It's anonymous, but um it says that how can you upload malicious files from a security solution to the recorded future sandbox and then return a report in D3? Uh, essentially like how you do any kind of um Reputational check. Uh, I think we misspoke when we said sandbox. We should, we should have just said reputation check. If a known hash or a known file name is present and it can be, you know, its characteristics can be attributed to some known uh, file within the vast array of amount of data, data that the recorded future has, we can get back the uh, information from there. Uh, so, for instance, if I can actually even maybe share a screenshot in the in the chat just to show you how it would look within D three. Um, right here, let's take the screenshot here. So you actually see within the D3 platform what you'd expect to return for maybe 
a uh yeah one while you're looking that up uh tom we i have been working with your development team uh, and they have access to the recorded future sandbox so if the integration is not uh, ready yet yeah, uh, it is something that i believe the team is working on to actually do file submissions to the recorded future sandbox formally uh, hatching triage so for anybody that is a recorded future customer if you have their security operations module uh, you will be able to uh, to use a recorded future sandbox okay i see tom has um pasted the screenshot in the chat um i believe it's only visible to uh hosts and panelists let me try and see if i can send it over to everyone great question sir. okay very good question yeah, that should have uh, reached everybody on uh on the workshop now um okay so the next question i believe this is um is very important how frequently should this workflow be run ideally um because this doesn't trigger necessarily an alert it's really at your own discretion but uh based off of your experience Luis, how often would you be looking for this information i know from our perspective i could see it maybe two to three days you know or because i could actually you, you can track when that when they're found right so i think what would be from yeah. your experience a good time from doing analysis uh, of stolen credentials, depending on the size of the customer, uh, I would recommend even once a day, because what we're seeing is that uh, there's a small amount of time from this, from when the credentials are discovered versus them being available uh, on a marketplace for sale. And whenever we've done analysis of um, breaches that have initiated with compromised credential, uh, you're talking about a matter of days. So the the quicker you could identify your compromised credentials and remove that access, the, the safer your organization is going to be. Um, I have we have context uh, about some of the technologies uh, that these credentials are associated with. And a lot of times, like I was saying at the beginning, those are for uh, technologies that allow remote access like RDP, uh, like Citrix or VPN, which means that it's not uh, if if somebody gets a hold of those credentials, they're going to be able to have access into the network and be able to move laterally and uh, even download malicious uh, additional malicious code. Uh, so it'd be really very hard to detect uh, later on. So that was a long winded answer, but I would recommend once a day. All right. So I, I noticed that we're coming up to the end of the time. We have another minute and um, I just want to take this opportunity to say that, um, you know, we are very grateful to all of you for joining today's workshop. If you're interested at all to try out the testing environment for the combined solution um, or to know more about either D3 or Recorded Future or anything at all that was discussed today, please drop me an email at marketing at d3security.com and I'll put you in touch uh, with the relevant people. I think we may have got one more question. Um, uh, Luis, are I you- I think there was an answer, yeah. Yeah, okay. So I, I'm gonna wait until you answer before we close the webinar. Yeah. Um, sorry, workshop. <laughs> um, the, the answer is very, uh, very easy. Uh, Recorded Future does have a sandbox. Uh, it's just a matter of leveraging the API, like I mentioned earlier. Uh, I believe the D3 team uh, development team is already working uh, on the on the API to be able to take an event uh, with a file and submit it to Recorded Future, and then download uh, the the full report from the Recorded Future sandbox. So if it's not available right now, I know it it should be coming here pretty soon. But the best answer there is maybe. We can connect the sales teams together with the with the individual and they can reach out to the uh, the email address on the screen and we can show them the, the process or maybe do a, a demo for them right 
Okay, thank you so much, Luis. Thank you, Tom. I appreciate all your time and energy. Um, I know it's never easy putting a workshop together. And thank you to this amazing audience for your fantastic questions. Um, we look forward to hearing back from you. Thank you so much.